guys, it's Justine, and today we are checking out the new Sony A6400. This was just announced by Sony, and we're getting a chance to check it out early. This is due out in February, so if you're watching this video and this camera is already out, I'll put some links in the description where you can check out some future videos that I'll be making with this camera. This is a huge upgrade from the A6300 and a small upgrade from the A6500, which has been my go-to recommended vlogging camera for the past few years. I actually have that camera right here. This thing has been on so many adventures. It's been around the world and it has been such an incredible camera. So judging by body styles, the 6500 and the 6400 look very, very similar. But there was one huge factor that the 6400 has that the 6500 does not have is a flip up screen. I know. This is something that we have been begging Sony to do in any of their full frame or mirrorless options. A lot of the times you can't see what you're filming and most of us, we're always filming ourselves or we're filming on the go. And there's been so many times in hotels that I forgot my little monitor and I'll have to film a video and just hope that I'm in frame. The only way that I can kind of see you guys is there's a mirror. I have to go like this to see in the mirror to see you. It's really quite silly. This is such an exciting, exciting thing that I think a lot of you guys are really, really gonna love. For most of my videos this past year, I did upgrade to the A7 III, which is an incredible camera. So that camera has been pretty much my main camera when I'm out and about. That wasn't good. Maybe I just don't like this club. It's just not sized right for my body. For these videos that I film like this, these are all filmed on the A7S II. Now this isn't a full frame camera like the A7 III, but it is the latest generation APS-C mirrorless in the Sony Alpha family. Look at that. You guys can see yourself. This is so great. I'm so glad they finally decided to add a flip screen. So this style flip screen isn't entirely new to Sony. They have the RX100 Mark V. As you can see here, it has a very similar style. So they basically just replicated what they did on the RX100 and attached that to the 6400. One of the challenges with this is if you have an external microphone, you won't be able to see the screen if you use it. So this is my normal setup. I just have a microphone that attaches to here. This is one of my favorite microphones because it does work with Sony's hot shoe, so you don't need to use any plugs or anything. It just automatically works. So as you can see, that's gonna pose a bit of a problem, but the good thing is when I am filming, I can still see if I'm in frame or in focus, even though that microphone is in the way. One of the good things though is these cameras have really good onboard audio. So I did a test with the microphone and without the microphone, and you can see there is a difference, but it's definitely not something that is necessary in every condition. The setup that I'm currently using, this is a little bit not really the most practical because I can't actually see myself too well, but I can see enough to know if I'm in frame or not. This is a very simple setup. This is usually my go-to. Even though I can't fully see the screen, it still works. So I popped off the microphone to see what the onboard audio sounds like, and this is what it sounds like in comparison to using this microphone that was on top of it. But oh my gosh, I love this flip-up screen so much. It's just like, finally, you've arrived. If you are outside or you're worried that there's gonna be wind, I would recommend using a microphone. We also put together a few vlogging rig options. So if you do wanna add an external mic and still be able to see your screen, this is something that I will probably be using pretty frequently, especially when I travel. And honestly, I cannot recommend this microphone enough because it will also work with a hot shoe, but it also comes with a cable. So if you do decide to use this setup, you can just plug the microphone in directly to the audio input. So this is my current setup. I have this side mounted bracket. This does make the camera a little bit bigger, but you're gonna have better audio. You're still gonna be able to see your screen up here. And Jenna also has a very interesting setup. She's got the flip up screen and this is kind of a side option, which I actually really like this too, because I feel like I love being able to hold my camera from the bottom. I like both options. It's gonna be interesting to see what you guys end up doing. I have this bad habit already of looking up at the screen instead of looking here. Reminder to you guys, don't look at the screen. Look at the lens. You can look at the screen when, like, you know, you're not filming anything. One of the main highlights, and probably most of you guys are wondering how much does this thing cost? You might also be wondering why do you have tape all over it? <laughs> I have it taped because this camera isn't officially out yet, so I didn't want people to know what I was filming with. The price for just the body is $900, which is actually really good because the price of this Sony RX100 is almost like a thousand, maybe even over a thousand if you get some of the other packages. So not only are you getting an incredible camera, but you're getting the option to have interchangeable lenses, which is huge because you can change 
the look of your videos so easily by switching out lenses. Obviously, that's not new information to most of you, but for some of you, it may be. With a 16 to 50 millimeter lens, that'll run you $1,100. And with this current rig that I have on right now, this will run you $1,300. And this is the 18 to 135 millimeter lens. I really like this lens. It's great. It's super versatile. And even though it is an 18 millimeter, it'll probably act as about a 24 millimeter when you're holding it out filming yourself. It's just the right length to fit yourself in frame and yet have some zoom options to be able to get up and close to get really cool close up shots of B roll. Hmm, that autofocus. Crispy. This is my first test of the A6400. I'm using a super simple setup right now. No microphone, no nothing, just the simple 18 to 135 lens. Here it is, there's Jenna. Hi! Hello! 135, 18. This is the lens we just call it a little pancake because that's basically what it looks like. It's so cute and so small, so if you are looking to save some money but still want to get a fairly decent lens, I would definitely recommend this. It gets the job done. It also makes your camera super, super light. This is so light, like I can't believe it. I'm so used to vlogging on the a7 III for the past year. This is just so magical. Another really cool thing is this does interval shooting for time lapses, which is huge. So you'll be able to create 4K time lapses. You can shoot in JPEG and RAW, so depending upon what quality you're looking for, you can make the choice, or you can shoot with both. The intervals can be set anywhere from one to 60 seconds, and you can shoot from one to 9,999 shots. Most of the new cameras that Sony has been releasing, they've removed the Play Memories app from the camera. So we used to use that a lot to do time-lapse videos and photos and all kinds of things. But now that that option isn't available, being able to have built-in interval shooting is incredible. Sony will shortly be releasing some software, so it'll make it super easy to put those together on your phone or on your computer. But you can just use Final Cut or Premiere, or if you guys have a time-lapse app already that does it for you, you can use that. This now has an S and Q option, which is right here on the wheel. This is something that most of the higher-end cameras cameras have, and that stands for slow and quick. This allows you to easily create slow-mo videos. This was available on the previous version of the 6500, but it wasn't here on the menu dial like this. This is something that I use so often on my a7 III, so it's really great to be able to just flip that switch, go to the S&Q, and on this camera, you can film 120 frames a second in slow-mo. And another little trick that I like to do is if you turn the frame rate to one, that'll also allow you to do time-lapse videos. Obviously, the time-lapse video on the S&Q setting isn't as good as if you do the interval shooting because you're getting those high res photos you can tell the quality difference so this one was shot on interval shooting and this was shot on one frame a second the s and q option the s and q option is super easy super simple it basically makes the video for you so you don't have to do any post-production but if you do want that higher quality video i definitely recommend trying out the interval shooting this will shoot 4k 30 frames a second and also 24 frames so i would love to hear a show of hands who likes 30 and who likes 24. leave those in the comments below as i said you can also shoot full hd in 120 frames a second also 60 frames a second you can also do 4k hdr hlg it also has support for S-Log2 and S-Log3. So if you are looking to color grade some of your footage, that is something that this will be able to provide you with. So as you can see here, this is what it looks like normally. And this is what it looks like color graded a little bit in Final Cut. Something else that is new in this camera is you can do proxy recording. So most of my videos I shoot in 4K and I just take those 4K clips and I edit those directly on my computer. But if you do have a slower machine or if you're having someone else edit your videos, you can send them the proxy files. But what's great is you won't have to render those out from your original 4K clips. This will automatically save those for you. I shoot a lot of my videos myself, so being able to have a super fast autofocus is so important. So one of the things that I do like is this camera does have a touch screen. You can turn that on or you can turn that off. This is also good if you're just out and about shooting because you're able to touch to track. So as you can see here, this is an option of tracking my sister. It is doing some really great face tracking. So even as she's ducking behind things and hiding, as soon as she reappears, it automatically picks up her face. This is also great if I'm I'm vlogging as well because I am able to keep my face in focus. So as you can see right now, the face tracking is happening. I'm filming my camera, filming myself, filming. I'm filming you, filming and Jenna's the camera, filming, filming me, filming the camera. <laughs> <laughs> this is so absurd, but there's a lot going into making this video, trying to get you guys these shots. But there's also eye tracking, so when you go in to take photos, you'll be able to choose the left or the right eye, or have it set up that it will auto determine which eye should be in focus. 
So we're gonna test that out now with Jenna. This is incredible because you always want the eye to be in focus. Now the IAF only works when you're taking photos, but this is so great for when you're taking portrait shots. I was testing out this lens. This lens basically costs more than this entire camera setup, but this is the 1.4 24mm G Master lens. And Sony let me borrow this to test out. So that's one of the really great things is if you do have this body, you can upgrade and get different lenses. This is a full frame lens and it still will work on this. So that's definitely great news if you do have any of the lenses. But Jen and I were at dinner and I was taking some gorgeous shots of her while she waited for her pasta. Oh, probably one of the most exciting things that I almost forgot about is this doesn't have the 29 minute limit. You guys, this is huge because all of these other Sony cameras, they end up cutting at 29 minutes, but this extends that limit. There's a lot of factors that go into play as to how long this will record. Yes, it will record longer than 29 minutes, but if you don't have an SD card that can hold more than 29 minutes, or your SD card is full, or it's really hot in the room, your camera may overheat and then shut off, which is a good thing because that's preserving your camera, but there is an option that you can go in and turn that off. So your camera will stay recording even if it is at a higher temperature. Day two of vlogging with the A6400, we are going to breakfast. That's some riveting content. Whoa. So today we're in Point Doom. This is one of our favorite places to come out and film because it's so beautiful and there's so much different things that you can film. For this, I decided to use the 18 to 135 lens. I feel like this is probably my go-to lens. You're able to still film yourself. We're heading up this hill. I have so much stuff in my backpack. I think I'm gonna pass out by the time I actually get up there. crazy because we almost always have perfect weather in Los Angeles but right now it's freezing it's overcast and not sunny at all we've been trying to get some cool shots for you guys but the weather just hasn't been cooperating so battery life on the older Sony cameras like the a7s2 the 6500 the 6300 and the 6400 they all use this same battery and it's not new information that these batteries do not last very long at all that was one of the biggest struggles that I used to have with the a7s2 because I would do kitchen shoots and we would be filming all day long so one of the things that I got for that especially now that this doesn't cut at 29 minutes I got one of the AC adapters so it's basically just this but it has a cord plugs into where the battery goes and then that cord plugs into the wall. It's actually what I'm using right now on this camera setup. I did notice the battery life does seem to be a little bit better than the A6500, but it still is along those same lines because it is the same battery. For comparison, this is the battery that is in the A7 III and the A7 III battery life is absolutely incredible. Obviously, it's better because the battery is massive. It is so much bigger than this one. So you're obviously able to get much better battery life out of it. So my recommendation to you, if you do have the A7S II or the 6500, 500 or you do plan on upgrading to the 6400 get yourself some extra batteries or they also have some different battery converter options so there's this one that I saw which I didn't even know they had this you can attach four of these batteries to your camera using kind of that same setup that I talked about before one thing that's kind of neat that I really never used before but you could do this in the a6500 as well but it's a pretty nice feature if you're filming and want to grab a still for a thumbnail later you can capture still photos from video it'll capture eight megapixel photos from a 4k video and four megapixel from an HD clip. So now I want to take you guys through a vlog setup. So let me show you what I mostly have been using with this camera. I love this little tripod mount. It's perfect if you want to use it as a tripod or you can hold it out like this for vlogging. If you do want to add on a microphone, this is honestly the easiest way to do it. Yes, your screen is going to be obstructed. This is the easiest way to go. But if you do want to be able to see your screen, which is definitely the main point of this camera, my sister came up with this rig, which I really liked. So using the same tripod, this little mount plate screws on just like that. I like leaving enough room on the side here so that you're able to pop the battery out. 
This little mounting plate will just attach right to here. Add different microphones, or if you wanna get really wild, <laughs> this shotgun microphone is ridiculous. And guess what? You guys are ready for vlogging. Although you're gonna have to be careful because <laughs> <laughs> the microphone keeps getting in the shot. This is a little aggressive. I don't think that this is an ideal setup for vlogging, but if you want really good audio, this is something that you'll need. So another option, obviously, this is extremely aggressive. I'm always so concerned about audio, so it's something that I always experiment quite often with. This is one of Sony's XLR mounts. This is actually what I use all the time when I'm filming my videos. This has a little hot shoe, so this plugs in directly right into your camera, and this gives you two XLR options right here. Okay, so now we're getting a little silly. These are Sennheiser AVX wireless microphones. These are my favorite, mostly because they automatically scan for channels to make sure that you don't have any distortion or anything. And it's great because you can move this around. Depending upon what your setup looks like, you can move that from side to side. It's also small and compact, and they're really, really great. So I've been using these for probably the past year or so. I look absurd. This is something I think that if you were filming with a crew or I don't know, you'd make your friends hold this because this is kind of crazy. Actually, I feel like I can add some more things onto this. You're now ready for a feature film. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh my gosh. You also don't need the tripod because you also have this little side mount, but I do prefer holding things on the bottom like this because it will keep your arm at the bottom as opposed to off to the side when you're vlogging. One thing to note on this XLR adapter is there are two different versions. So there's one you're seeing here that has this cable with the hot shoe attached, but the one that I'm using here that I'm filming this video on in front of me does not have this cable and the hot shoe is attached directly to here. So this cable is non-existent. For most situations, the one that I'm filming with right here is probably the best option because that doesn't give you this cable. But for set up like this, where you do want to have the microphone off to the side, this is perfect for this sort of situation. So honestly, you're going to have to ask yourself, like, what am I going to be doing? What do I actually need? Is this overkill? Potentially, but I've been creating a lot of videos for a really long time, and the type of stuff that I do, this is the things that I need. But for someone just starting out, honestly, all you need is a camera. You can use your phone to start. So that, my friends, was a first look at the brand new Sony a6400 with the flip-up screen. This is going to be so great for vloggers, because this is honestly all you need. This this right here. This is a perfect setup. If you need a microphone, pop this thing on. I probably would prefer a flip out screen, but I'm not going to be picky. What you're getting in these cameras is so incredible that a lot of us have been dealing without a flip screen for so long because the camera is so, so good. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you got some insight into the new A6400 by Sony. As I said in the beginning of this video, I will be updating the links in the description so that if I have created some videos about this camera and it's already out and you're looking for more information, I will put those all in the description and I look forward to seeing what you guys think. But I'm gonna go and edit this video and I will see you very, very soon. Bye!